Hello and welcome back to Eureka, yes. I thought it was about time we revisited this content since in 5.1 it actually got some love. How much love, you might ask? Well, the 5.1 notes read, The Echo has been added to the Forbidden Land of Eureka, increasing player's maximum HP, damage dealt and healing potency. They say it's easier to spawn notorious monsters and story quest completion is no longer required to ride mounts. Now on paper that sounds amazing, especially the bit about the mounts. That was the biggest restriction at the start of Eureka content, especially now there are less players. Getting around is a little bit you know, potato, let's say. Now it's less potato. I'm going to use the word potato for bad, not Lalafell. Note that down. So, okay, is it enough to actually future-proof this content? I did a previous video that Eureka needs a phoenix down, so let's take a look if this has changed anything in particular. My first port of call was to go straight into Eureka Hydatos and to try and spawn a notorious monster alone, which honestly didn't actually happen in the time frame I had. I spent about an hour or two just trying this in various places. I actually thought to myself, for this footage at least, what was the most irritating notorious monster back then to spawn in Hydatos? And I remember the elephant, like the massive mammoth guy to the north, was absolutely annoying like who he was like the most potato of all the notorious monsters for some reason he just had this awful respawn and you had to kill so many mammoths to try and get him to spawn turns out he's still a complete potato to spawn however this kind of did give me a taste of some of the echo changes and how easy it now felt to kill monsters inside eureka now bear in mind i'm elemental level 60 in this footage so that's already max maximum level inside Hydatos, which is not surprising then that I can kill a couple in a row without really taking damage. But I remember back then in Stormblood that all of these monsters together, like if you pull them in, in a large pack, would require a pocket healer, otherwise you, even as a tank, would get butchered pretty quickly. So I got more confident after a few kills and realized that the sheer gap levels grant now in health and damage reduction is absolutely massive. I could actually do all of the big AoE pulls to the limit of them leashing with no worries on my warrior here, barely pressing a single damage reduction CD and on a full offensive stance magia board. So in translation, stuff's a lot easier to kill because it does a lot less damage to you with the echo buff. I spent more time than I'd care to admit trying to spawn this mammoth boss, but ultimately I ended up giving up, especially when I saw that the rabbit fate was up and had just spawned. These are essentially time spawns where you have to help these little happy bunnies by killing the bad guys that spawn around them, which ultimately should reward you with the chance of getting a happy happy bunny following you around Eureka, which if you actually follow and feed a carrot, he will tell you the destination of a treasure chest through a hot and cold minigame, which can give you logograms, and if you're very lucky, a gold chest and indeed rewards such as mounts and minions, which, you know, obviously is one of the things that you want to do if you're doing this solo. The fate itself was soloable before, like, it was difficult, but it wasn't, like, impossible. But now it's really, really simple. This gave me probably the best representation of the way that the notorious monsters are going to feel if I had actually managed to spawn one. Ultimately, very easy. Even the actual boss that came out didn't actually worry me enough to put on a defensive magia stance. He just completely melted with my offensive one and did very little bits of damage. And I believe that I could probably do this as red mage or black mage or any other, you know, DPS. And I wouldn't really take any damage either and maybe some of the more squishy ones I'd probably switch to a defensive stance magia board and have no problems either. To further explore the limits of solo play then in here now as a tank I actually went over to where near uh, Providence Watcher spawns which is the you know the Pazuzu of the last Eureka instance and thought to myself I wonder how hard these scorpions hit. They used to absolutely melt my face. I've died here 
here more times than anywhere else in Eureka, being five levels higher than the maximum you can obtain yourself, it turns out they still melt my face, although I did forget in this footage to try out the defensive magia stance, so they might have been doable, but with this sort of damage I was receiving, I thought that at this point I had seen enough. So to bring this story to a conclusion for this video, did this set of changes actually future-proof Eureka? In my honest opinion, no, I don't think so. It's a start and does make things easier, but the notorious monster spawns are still going to rely on a fair amount of people or a lot of patience to actually grind for them to spawn, and things like Providence Watcher are going to probably be way too powerful to do on your own, and that obviously begs the question of, you know, I know you can get the feathers from a vendor by turning in crystals, but, you know, is it really going to be as fun as it originally was? Is it future-proofed? Is it a complete package? This does, however, mean that if you did bring three friends in here and made a small light party, you could totally farm your weapons together to completion. I doubt at this point, at least, you'll be able to do it nearly as fast in smaller parties or solo than you did when it was popular in Stormblood. And in many respects, that really doesn't make this a very good piece of content. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to improve this in my opinion but it's definitely a good first start i'm about like two percent more confident that i could stomach another farm session in here and probably get a weapon in about a month or two solo but i still think there needs to be something to prevent this from just becoming another diadem and i still think that there needs to be more attention designed for this sort of content to prevent it from getting outdated stale and all of those rewards just fading into obscurity obscurity and obviously the market value just shooting up into the sky. If you've looked at the price of some of the mounts from Eureka, you'll know exactly what I mean. Either way, let me know if you have tried Eureka personally since the 5.1 changes went live solo, if you've had any better luck, and if you still plan to farm for your weapons. And I'll see you all next time.